It's Friday, October 21st, 2011. We've got globalist apologist Jamie Bartlett joining us from London. At the end of the transmission tonight, we have the head of Euro Pacific Capital exposing Herman Cain's 9999 plan, and then some. Peter Schiff, it's jam packed this evening, but first, let's get into some of the news. Well, Nothing like ha having a chicken-necked globalist like Hillary Clinton, who flies around in armored Air Force Threes, uh, making uh, jokes and requoting and butchering Julius Caesar quotes of, I came, I saw, I conquered. She said, basically, we came, we saw, he's dead. And uh, she magically arrived right on time for the killing of Gaddafi. They say they're going to bury him at sea. Lord knows if any of this is true. I and mean, when you have a group of congenital liars telling you something, you would be a fool to believe them. But the video does look pretty convincing of him being murdered. Uh, and I'm no fan of Gaddafi, but he's a small-time globalist, uh, crime syndicate, thug, tyrant, whatever you want to call it, and did try to actually build up Africa. As tyrants go, he's nothing compared to somebody like Hillary Clinton. And we all saw Forrest Gump hang out with President Kennedy. That was decades ago. And I'm telling you, folks, Forrest Gump isn't real. And that was a fraud as well. So let's go to this short clip of Hillary and the CBS News harpy. Uh, that's not fair. She's not a harpy. She's more of a banshee joking about his death. So, I mean, that is the land of unconfirmed. Yes, we came. We saw, he died. <laughs> did it have anything to do with your visit? No, oh, I'm sure it did. You'll die too, Hillary. And I wish no harm upon you. I want you to live out a long life with all your evil. Anybody that has to uh, basically gloat over people's deaths who you set up and who the West got to come in out of the cold and invest with Western companies and with Sarkozy of France and the leader of England as well, Tony Blair, and now you've cheated him and stolen tens of billions of dollars of the Libyans' money. And Well, let, well let's actually go to some of that news. Uh, Gaddafi's been killed without a trial, uh, and we've also now have the before and after uh, photos that we'll show you in a moment. There's a bunch of these online. Every major city of Libya that have the highest share of living now in Africa has been absolutely decimated. There's one before and after photo, 2007 versus 2011. I mean, look at that wrecked, wrecked city of Misrata or Mistrata. And now the globalists will come in with our tax money and give it to globalist private corporations to rebuild it, the very people that uh, destroyed it. So uh, very dangerous development in globalism where they fund rebels, Al-Qaeda in this case, to overthrow a country, wreck the nation, and then they have a Nobel Peace Prize winner doing it. So uh, it's supposedly all, uh, you know, wonderful. But as I said earlier, we don't know if he was killed. We don't know if he was uh, executed earlier uh, in Central Africa when U.S. Special Forces invaded Uganda last week. We don't know the truth. Now they claim they're burying him at sea, just like Osama bin Laden, and we know that that report was a fraud. And now the vast majority of the sailors on the U.S. aircraft carrier that supposedly buried bin Laden at sea, they've been busted for using some new synthetic drug called Spice. And 49 of 64 sailors involved in burying bin Laden at sea, burying the Keebler elf or Santa Claus or Easter Bunny at sea or Tooth Fairy at sea, they have now been dishonorably discharged and kicked out of the Navy. So dishonorably discharged men tell no tales. Now, shifting gears over to the police state in England, the police have been caught in the U.S., Canada, Italy, you name it, provocateuring to disrupt peaceful democratic movements. 
And it's a big controversy now in England where the police have been caught perjuring themselves on the stand, provocateuring groups, you name it. Uh, it's all coming out, the different dirty tricks uh, that they use to try to set up different organizations and to also ingratiate themselves, as we just showed you, sexual relationships. And finally, before we go to break with Ron Paul's newest campaign ad devastating uh, the other political uh, whores that he's exposing, we have a report out of MIT where they tell the world that they've developed systems that look through your walls and the police and military are going to be using this. My friends, in the 16 years that I've been on air, I have seen literally hundreds of government reports admitting that the police already in America on the ground and on helicopters are looking through our walls with ground penetrating radar. The reason you're seeing more and more admissions of this is they're getting ready to turn it loose on the population. We're going to go to break and come back with Peter Schiff after this round. Okay, we're back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. We're about to talk to our next guest on the economy. Then we've got another guest on who's kind of an apologist uh, for the congenital liars uh, of the establishment. But I wanted to just talk about the report we covered last night. $79 trillion of Bank of America derivatives that they're about to have American taxpayers try to pay for and then lecture us all day about our debts. Uh, it's just incredible. So it's very important to realize that it's the ultra-rich waging war against the middle class trying to con uh, basically people that aren't aware of it. So we're going to be talking about Herman Cain's 9999 plan. Where does that extra nine come in? And with more on the economy and this vital election, we're joined by the CEO of Euro-Pacific Capital, Peter Schiff. He's written an excellent article today that Infowars.com picked up, Business Insider and uh, many other sites. There's a hidden nine in Herman Cain's 999 plan. Now, obviously, my criticism is we were always told by the fair taxers they would get rid of the income tax and bring in a uh, sales tax or VAT. Herman wants both, and those nines can become 15s, 20s, 30s, as they've done in Europe and England. But then there's also the FICA. They're not going to want to get rid of Social Security in there. They're going to keep 9999. But we'll find out the other hidden nine that uh, Peter Schiff uh, is talking about uh, here today. Peter, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on, Alex. Uh, so uh, you've written this article, but, but break it down. W where is the hidden nine in Herman Cain's plan? Well, the, the fourth nine is the 9% payroll tax that is imposed through uh, what is purported to be a 9% corporate income tax. It isn't a 9% corporate income tax. It actually is a gross receipts tax. And embedded in that gross receipts tax is a 9% tax on payrolls. And the only way for businesses to recoup that payroll tax is through their, their, their workforce. Now, granted, that represents a reduction of the 15.3% payroll tax that is already in place, where half of it is paid directly by the worker and the other half is paid indirectly by the worker through reduced wages. But the problem is Herman Cain is claiming that he completely gets rid of the payroll tax, that it no longer exists. That's not true. It's still there. It's just not as high. But the problem is the way Herman is selling his plan to the average worker is that he's going to get a reduction in taxes because he's going to have no payroll taxes and he's going to pay just a 9% income tax and a 9% sales tax. If that were really the case, then pretty much all working Americans would get a tax cut under the Herman Cain plan. Of course, if you retired and, you know, you might, you're, they were going to get a tax hike. But if, if you account for the fourth nine, that's not the case. That's a game changer. What the fourth nine means is that the majority of Americans under the 9999 plan are going to be paying 27% of their income in taxes, which is much higher than a lot of those people pay now. So the only way the plan works, the only way it's revenue neutral, is because you have big tax increases on the middle class and lower class to pay for tax cuts for higher income workers. 
Now, it is a pro-growth plan. We are going to get more economic growth out of this plan. We're going to get more jobs out of this plan because we're freeing up capital. We're treating capital a lot better. We're going to have more investments. We're going to have more savings. We're going to have more job creation. But we're going to have to pay for that by putting the bill on the middle class. Now, if we don't want to stick the middle class with a bill, then we need to cut government spending dramatically. You know, but the government wants to pretend that we can have a growing economy all this government spending and stick the bill on the rich. It ain't going to work because if we try to put the bill on the high income earners, then we're not going to get the economic well, growth and we're not going to get the jobs. We're just going to have a lot of government and a lot of unemployment. Sure, Peter, let me interject here because this is important. I, I saw the Economic Policy Journal um, criticize you, why Peter Schiff and Arthur Laffer are wrong about Herman Cain 999. And it's got classic class warfare garbage about you just don't want rich people tax but sales taxes vat taxes uh from what i've researched just basic econ you know economics that always hits the poorest people uh so this makes no sense oh yeah and of course the people that are hurt the most by taxes that discourage job creation are the people who are looking for jobs so by keeping taxes high on the job creators we're keeping a lot of people unemployed they would be better to get a job and then pay some taxes than to be unemployed and pay no taxes. But, you know, Art Laffer is, is applauding the 999 plan because he doesn't know about the hidden nine. See, I have a difference of opinion. I figured out that there's a fourth nine. Art Laffer doesn't even know that yet. Uh, but the thing is, I'm in favor of moving towards a tax structure where people are taxed based on what they spend, not based on what they earn. Now, the standard liberal argument is, well, that's not fair because the rich people don't spend everything like the poor people. They save some of their money. Well, precisely. We want them to save their money because when they save their money, they're, they're delaying gratification for themselves. They're postponing their consumption into the future. When they eventually spend, they'll pay the taxes. But in the meantime, the money is used to grow the economy. It provides capital for businesses. Sure. Either the individual who's earning the money uses it to grow his own business, or he loans it out either through the banking system or directly to some other entrepreneur. So why would we want to take money that was going to be used to grow the economy and send it to Washington, where it's going to use it to undermine the economy? All right, Peter, Peter, let me expand on that because, you know, I had read your excellent, there's a hidden nine in Herman Cain's plan uh, today. I hadn't read this full article. Now I've actually had a chance. We were talking to scan over it a bit. And they're actually criticizing you in this. But they're saying you're endorsing his 9999 plan. But I, I, I follow you closely. I hadn't seen you endorse Kane's 999 plan. No, I haven't endorsed it, and I think it's a loser in the general election. If 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 Kane gets the nomination with his 999 plan, it's going to come out that there's a fourth nine in there, and you know the public is going to reject it because they're not going to vote for higher taxes on themselves. But my whole point is, it shows just how much of the tax burden the rich currently bear. I mean, if you're going to reduce the taxes on the upper income people so that it's the same as people that earn less money, you you can't do that. So Either you've got to massively cut government spending or you've got to raise taxes on the middle class in order to cut taxes okay. on upper income. But, 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 but hold if we on, don't let cut me quantify this. Taxes, we're not going to get growth. Let me quantify this because I had a college student call me today and he said, You don't want to redistribute the wealth, the wealth of the 1%. You know, you're basically anti American. But it wasn't reality based. And, 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 and so quantify that. You're explaining to people if you cut the taxes on the rich, yeah, that would speed the economy up. But this plan actually increases it overall on the poor who aren't paying a lot of taxes right now, and that'll cause issues as well. That's what you're getting at, right? But it's also increasing taxes on the middle class. Most people are going to get a tax hike under this plan. See, the real problem is government is too big. Government is too expensive. We have to cut government so that we don't have to raise taxes on anybody. In fact, if we cut enough government, we can lower taxes on everybody. But if we want all this government that we have now, it is very expensive. And we can't put the bill just on the rich because then the economy collapses. So if we want all this government, the truth is the middle class has got to pay for it. And people think that the rich are getting away with murder. Look, I'm paying about half my income in taxes right now. I don't know how much more I can take. Yeah, is it, you know, they're trying to pretend that the rich are paying less in taxes than their secretaries. That's nonsense. And not only are the rich paying higher rates than their secretaries, but in absolute numbers, 
I mean, think about Warren Buffett. They're saying he's paying less rate than his secretary. They're saying Warren Buffett is paying 17%. Yeah, but he's paying like 10 million a year. I mean, his secretary might be paying a higher rate, but maybe she's only paying 10,000 versus his 10 million. But it's also a lie because Warren Buffett is the biggest shareholder of Berkshire Hathaway. He doesn't even take a salary. He works for free. So his income is Berkshire's income and Berkshire Hathaway is paying 35% income tax. That's Warren's money. He's paying his taxes through Berkshire Hathaway. Sure. So not only is he paying a lot more in taxes than his secretary, but he's paying a higher rate. And anybody who says otherwise, including Warren Buffett, is lying. Well, let's expand on that. Here in Texas, we have a stealth income tax. That's the franchise tax. I pay taxes on all the equipment, everything, and, and a percentage on my profits. And, I mean, it's taxes on top of taxes. So let me ask you this question. Why then do we see the ultra-rich Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and others. I mean, I have my answer for it. Why do we see them promoting higher taxes? Well, you know, Warren Buffett, you know, he, he actually benefits from the estate tax because a lot of businesses have to be sold because they can't survive the estate tax. And then Warren gets to buy them up on the cheap uh, through Berkshire Hathaway. So he has an interest in, in breaking up a lot of these businesses, even though it's a destructive tax. On the income tax, I don't know. Maybe he just wants to be liked. You know, it's a lot easier to be liked if you if you if you adopt these uh, liberal agenda. It's more difficult to have to explain to people why just taxing the rich is a bad deal for the middle class and the poor. You know, I was down at Occupy Wall Street yesterday. We've got a video coming out uh, from Reason TV. It'll be on YouTube next week. But all these people, the majority of people who are there that are mad, they're all blaming the rich. They think the problems emanate from taxes. I had one person say the reason we had the Great Depression was because the rich weren't paying enough taxes. You know, that, that all the problems are because the rich aren't paying enough taxes. And if we just jacked up the taxes on the rich, that everything would be better. I mean, people don't understand that the reason the rich are rich is because they created the middle class. They're the ones that figured out what to produce. They created the jobs. They created the products that they're doing. They're giving, they're paying their fair share just by getting rich. Anything they pay in taxes is just gravy. Well, Peter, take, yeah. Uh, but but if the young college students that call me on the radio and 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 disagree with with what I'm saying, with what you're saying, would just look at history. Kennedy cut taxes in what one bracket by fifty percent, the other thirty eight percent. Tax receipts the next year doubled. The ruling government class knows when you raise taxes, it always ends up destroying business and overall revenue uh, down the line. So the question is, if this basic fact of economics is there, why then does the government class want it? The answer is control. You look at Warren Buffett, he knows that higher taxes on middle class and wealthy will be used in further banker bailouts of Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and others who invested in the derivatives. And I think in that lies the answer. You talked about him wanting to keep the uh, estate tax to break up companies. That's it. The ultra-rich, uh, in many cases, have an incentive through government to use regulations and insider deals. Take General Electric, moving jobs offshore, getting tax exemptions, but then always calling for higher taxes on the general public. I mean, I think it's that crony capitalist element that's involved in all of this that's sicking the working yeah, class. On they want higher taxes on all the people who are actually paying the taxes. Meanwhile, they're not paying any because they, they can escape them. And when we talk about raising taxes, it, Obama wants to raise taxes on the rich, and he cites Warren Buffett, but he wants to raise my taxes, and I'm already paying a lot higher tax than what he believes Warren Buffett is. I'm already paying 50%, and he wants to raise it. You know, what we need to do is look back at the 19th century. Look at how fast the U.S. economy grew. Look at the Industrial Revolution. Look at how much living standards rose percentage-wise without even all the technology we have today. We had much faster economic growth when nobody paid income taxes than we have today when everybody is paying sure, yeah. income taxes. Great point. That's like Ron Paul. Uh, he'll be on CNN, Fox, and they say, you want to get rid of the income tax. How will we have a government? And he says, this capital was built behind me, this whole system, and we didn't have this income tax. Let's look more at the 999 than briefly at what's happening in Europe, and then we'll, we'll uh, let you go, uh, Peter. Uh, looking at 999, there's that payroll tax that anybody who actually has a real business in the real world 
noses there, so it's nine, 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 nine. But what about the danger of once, let's say Herman Cain was successful, once they got into uh, into the position of having the cam the camel's nose under the tent flap, what happens then once they start trying to raise uh, the, the different taxes, A, and B, what about the prospect of having the federal government now involved in sales taxes and VAT? We think we have a nightmare now with the IRS. What about, what about this, this power grab with federal tentacles into everything? Yeah, I mean, that's another risk that you give the government another revenue stream to exploit. But look, I think we risk higher taxes regardless, whether they get us through a sales tax or an income tax. And of course, you know, the sales tax is somewhat self-correct against to abuse, which is what the founding fathers said, because if they jack that tax up too high, people won't buy. There'll be a black market that people will try to avoid it. So you can't put a sales tax too high or you're not going to have any sales to tax. Uh, but I have sympathy with the idea that, look, we want less government. We want to, we want to take away these revenue streams. I, I would love to replace uh, the income tax with a sales tax. But, yes, this, this layers it on top of it. I know Herman Cain's goal is to actually eventually get rid of the income tax and go to a total uh, sales tax model. So that is the goal. But of course, you know what we say about the best laid plans, you know, uh, what often happens to them. But I don't think that's really the best criticism of his plan. I think the real criticism uh, is, the, is the hidden nine. You know, when you hear guys like um, Rick Romney uh, arguing about, well, it's a, it's a federal sales tax on top of a state sales tax. I mean, so what? I mean, we got a federal income tax on top of a state income tax. So if we could get rid of the two income taxes and have two sales taxes instead, I think that's better. I mean, I, I, you know, it doesn't bother me to pay a sales tax. I don't, I don't have to hire accountants. I don't have to keep records. I don't have to file forms. I don't, you know, it's, I just pay it. It, does, it. I don't even consider it. So I would much rather have the federal government taxing me on what I spend uh, than on, on the income tax. Even if I ended up paying the same amount of tax, it'd just be a lot easier for me. And we, we, sure. In we, fact, we what's get the rid number? Of this whole compliance structure. Well, that's what I was about to ask. Well, I, I forget the number. It's some gargantuan amount. How much do Americans spend every year complying and filing income taxes? Oh, it's like at least half a trillion dollars. And think about industries. Think about all the accountants. What a waste of time. You know, I'm in the brokerage industry. I have people coming up with all kinds of accounts, pensions, IRAs, KEOs, estate planning. All of this is to avoid the income tax. Just get rid of it and there's nothing to avoid. And then we don't have to waste all these resources doing things that we don't really need. We can use these resources productively. You know, we're in a gigantic economic hole now. We need everybody possible helping us dig our way out. You know, we don't want a bunch of uh, accountants and lawyers getting in the way. Peter, I've been asking the questions here tonight, uh, but I want to get your view on Ron Paul and where his campaign is going. A, and then B, looking at Europe, uh, we saw the dollar get hammered today, but Europe is in a lot of trouble. Uh, they haven't been able to get their, quote, deal uh, to create this new super eurozone that's going to attempt to raise taxes uh, to pay off all these debts. So where do you see Ron Paul's campaign going, A, and B, what do you see happening in Europe and the U.S. economy? Well, I mean, obviously, I'm hopeful that Ron Paul's campaign will catch on. I mean, right now, he's still hovering around 10 percent. So that puts him kind of ahead of uh, the second tier, uh, but still behind the top tier candidates. So he really needs to kind of break out. And it seems like everybody has been getting uh, their turn in the limelight. First, it was Michelle Bachman, and then her star faded quickly. Now we got Herman Cain. Uh, so maybe Ron Paul is going to have his day. I don't know. Hopefully he will. I know that as the race progresses, eventually some people are going to drop out. And Ron Paul is going to have the staying power because he does have, you know, very committed supporters. So his, his support is not that wide, but it's really, really deep. That gives him the staying power. Hopefully he can stay in it long enough to catch on. You know, I think Romney really shot himself in the foot by admitting on the, the last debate that the only reason he didn't want to hire illegals was because he was running for president and it would look bad. So that's going to come back and bite him. I think Rick Perry, you know, I mean, people, he, he his star fizzled out pretty quickly, too. So Herman Cain's got some problems. Can Herman Cain really stay at the top? And if not, who's going to replace him? I mean, maybe Newt Gingrich? I don't know. But Ron Paul, you know, he's got a shot at it. So we got to stick in there. He's got to keep plugging away. Maybe if we can get some more media coverage, 
Uh, you never know. You know, I think he could beat Obama, so we just got to get him the nomination. But I still would have to say it's still, you know, a yeah. long shot, but it's not no shot. Anyway, getting to your question about the euro and the dollar. Look, I think the euro is going to rally. I think that, uh, you know, I, I, as bad as the problems are in Europe, they are worse here. I'm convinced of that. And so I think uh, we've got bigger problems for the dollar. And we might get a big rally in the euro. We're at, we're at a key level right here, uh, the way we closed out the week in the currency markets, the stock markets, global stock markets. If they move up on Monday, we can have a huge rally uh, in, in stock markets. And we could have a huge decline in the dollar. That doesn't mean I think there's going to be a new bull market in stocks. I think that we're going to run into resistance up around, what, 12,400 in the Dow. And then I think there's going to be another problem that's going to come up and it's going to cause another sell off. I think we move sideways, but I think we got a lot of people that were too negative, got short in that last sell off uh, last month. And I think that we're going to get uh, a rally. Now, if we, you know, if, if we sell off on Monday big, then, you know, because we're right at the resistance right now. We're right where we should sell off. But looking at the action in the market this week, you know, we haven't had the sellers up at this high end. There's been buying coming in, and I think we're, we're going through the overhead resistance. So I think the markets look like they want to go up, and the dollar looks like it wants to go down. I think the wild card is going to be the bond market, because the bond market could also get beat up a little bit here if the stock market goes up and the dollar goes down. That could set up potentially the next crisis, maybe late in the year, early next year, where if the dollar and the bond market are falling a lot, uh, that could, you know, be problematic. Right now, I think people look at a weak dollar as a good thing. I don't think it's good, but I think Wall Street thinks it's good. But eventually, they might think it's too much of a good thing. And instead of worrying about the euro, we might actually start worrying about the dollar. Going back to Ron Paul, I agree with your analysis. We've seen the stars rise of uh, people like Perry, people like Bachman, and then fade. Ron Paul has really got the issues. He's got the gravitas. He's in that 10, 15 point range. And if he can just stay in there, uh, they had a big scientific study come out last week that he's being ignored more than any candidate. If they gave him fair coverage, uh, he would be the front runner. And so he's got a real potential. You know, if this was the Indianapolis 500, he's in third place right now. There's no doubt. And if we point out the real record of gun control, and open borders and Obamacare of Mitt Romney and the Federal Reserve tax and spend, uh, you know, type activities of uh, Herman Cain, Ron Paul is going to shoot up there as that leader, even if the dinosaur corporate media tries to block him. Uh, in closing, you have predicted much of what's happened in our economy. More and more, the mainstream media admits it's more of a depression than a recession. Uh, Obama is falling like a rock. Pelosi won't even mention his name. Uh, I mean, the system is definitely yeah. out of bullets. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that uh, that Kane will, will, will appoint Art Laffer as his economic advisor, and then we can resurrect those old CNN, CNBC debates with me and Art Laffer, where he got everything completely wrong, and say, hey, why, why is this guy your economic advisor? And that might discredit him a bit and help, help Ron. Well, Peter Schiff, thank you so much for spending time with us tonight. I look forward to talking to you again uh, in the future. And, of course, uh, we've had your Euro-Pacific Capital website up. Uh, there's also shiftradio.com for folks to visit. I appreciate you joining us tonight. Hey, thanks a lot, Alex. Have a great weekend. Thank you for spending time with us. You have a great weekend as well. And you, the viewers of InfoWars Nightly News, I want you to have a great weekend. But the show isn't over. We're going to break. We're coming back. I'm going to debate a British think tank operative who doesn't like conspiracy theorists talking bad about the New World Order. That's coming up after this break. Stay with us. And you are watching the Friday, October 21st, 2011 edition of InfoWars Nightly News. And we are not funded like MSNBC and others with banker bailout money given to the corporate fascists that control those on the liberal socialist matrix plantation no we are funded by viewers and subscribers like you at prisonplanet.tv and thanks to your support we then distribute this out to youtube and other platforms where it's seen by millions of people in the aggregate every week that is true liberty collectively waking up the planet now i saw an article uh, a few days ago by Paul Joseph Watson, government front group vows to abolish critical thinking. Marxist founded Demos is terrified that school children are questioning the establishment. And the BBC or the Ministry of Truth folks uh, are agreeing. And 
Now, this is an organization uh, that is very upset about conspiracy theories or things not in the official orthodoxy, like Obama is a man of peace uh, or torture is good and liberal, uh, things like that, or mercury in shots is good for you, uh, things like that, questioning 7-7, questioning 9-11. But then I saw this gentleman on the BBC. He seemed to be one of the most well-spoken and friendly fellows. And I have to say that, uh, that well, we're going to find out from him if Paul Watson's article is accurate. Because, again, these are the folks that can tell you if something is accurate or not. This is the oracle high on the mountain that you go to to find out what's veritas and what is deception. He's Jamie uh, Bartlett. Uh, he is the head of Violence and Extremism Program. Uh, he tracks, uh, well the troublemakers out there. And so we're honored to have him join us. Uh, from uh, England, Airstrip One, uh, where are you over there? I'm over in uh, East London here. All right, you're and in I'm East really London. Happy. Can, I, can I say I'm really happy to be here and I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. Well, it's good to talk to you. I'm sure you can try to do an anthropology study for the Hive Borg to, uh, to teach us. No, no, I'm gonna stop being mean. Uh, <laughs> what is your organization really about, common purpose, all those folks uh, trying to teach the, the school children about the evil internet? Paul Joseph Watson's article was a ridiculous, ridiculous, mis I think intentional misunderstanding of what we said. The, the headline, I've got the article in front of me, government front group vows to abolish critical thinking. It's completely ridiculous. What we did was to say that we need more critical thinking in schools because the simple fact is, at the moment, there's a lot of good stuff on the internet. There's a lot of liberating information on the internet, a lot of information that has shown governments at times to be corrupt and corrosive. But there's also a load of rubbish on the internet. You surely can accept that. And all we're saying is that we need young people to be better at critically assessing and evaluating the information they consume. There are Holocaust denial sites splattered all over the web. We need to make sure kids aren't sucked into this stuff. You know, in his article, he says that I, or Demos, is trying to tell students they should only believe what the government and the mainstream media tells them is true. Where is that in the report? I never said anything of the sort. It's completely ridiculous. We need people to be critical of our governments because they do lie. And they are so. Well, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. That, I mean, we've got you here so you can set the record straight, uh, you know, I mean, from your perspective. But, I mean, has the organization that you're part of not come out, because he had links to it, and said 9-11 truth, people that question 7-7, that this is dangerous conspiracy theories. So see, from our perspective, we've looked at the real facts, and uh, you guys are connected, according to his report, to Common Purpose, uh, that we've seen involved some pretty creepy stuff. Okay, just answer my question. What's your view on 9-11 and 7-7 and government-sponsored terrorism? I don't think that 9-11 nor 7-7 were inside jobs. And I don't think that it's an official account. I think it's the account of thousands of experts, of journalists, of academics, of people that are interested in the subject. I have never said, actually, for the record, that there's anything dangerous about people who believe 9-11, um, uh, tr the 9-11 truth movement. The report I wrote, which again was completely misinterpreted by Paul Joseph Watson and others, said that I was accusing 9-11 truthers of being terrorists. It was absolutely not. All I said was, if you look across right-wing, left-wing terrorism, uh, religious terrorism, you often find a conspiracy somewhere in that. Well, that's not particularly surprising. If you look at the angry brigade left-wing terrorists, they also thought there was a conspiracy against them. So that's all I've ever said. Well, hold on. I mean, it's come out of the major British papers. Uh, and I've interviewed yeah. Steak Knife and others, that the leadership in many cases of the IRA violent arm was actually led by British intelligence, MI6, MI5, British commandos, SAS, as a pretext to scuttle peace deals in Northern Ireland and to have a pretext to crack down. Gulf of Tonkin to get the U.S. into Vietnam, a lie. Uh, it's come out in, in even the London Guardian that in Germany, the government didn't just infiltrate neo-Nazi groups, they created them. Uh, and, 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 and so the idea, you know, uh, from what I got, what you were saying is that some of these extremist groups are into conspiracy theories. I actually have seen the opposite. I've seen government actually infiltrating groups and trying to make them violent. 
I don't doubt that that's happened as well. You can't. You, you, I'm not going to to sit here and try to deny that our governments are whiter than white, that they've never done anything untowards, that they've never infiltrated groups and pushed them further on. There's apparently one example where MI5 agents, an entire IRA cell was actually made up of only MI5 agents all watching each other because no one knew what the others were, were up to. But that doesn't mean to say that every single thing that ever happens is always by definition a conspiracy. I think each time you weigh up the evidence, you look at the case in hand, you think about it empirically, you think about it rationally, and you come to your conclusion. Okay, well, that's what I do. Oh, hold on. I mean, I, I believe they killed Gaddafi. Hey, I believe they killed Gaddafi because I, I, I know his background, I know the case, I've watched the video, I've done the research. Now, the bin Laden thing, that's totally separate. That's fake. But, but, but am I a conspiracy? Listen, when the government and, and, and mainstream media have been caught lying on purpose over and over again, Rupert Murdoch infiltrating, police spying on people, all this stuff, I would be crazy to just believe what government and mainstream media tell me. I've never said you should believe. I've never said that you should always believe what government and mainstream tells you. I mean, if you're, if we, I mean, we're looking at my report, my report about critical thinking. People, young people, any people who are critical thinkers should not only question what the establishment tells them, what the mainstream tells them, but I would also hope they would be equally critical and hold the same standards of evidence and information against alternative sources of information. Yeah, I'm but sure that goes on. That. I mean, I'm sure you would agree with that. Well, sure, I would say question everything, including the BBC. Precisely. No, yeah, question the BBC, question them all. I have no problem with that whatsoever. But the unfortunate fact is, for a lot of young people in particular, they don't question things equally. They believe anything that's anti-government. Now, sometimes the government does lie, but not always. Okay, well, and here's an example. Government. Here's an example. Over 80% in the polls I've seen of the British people believe that the royal family was involved in killing Diana. But mainstream media still makes fun of them as crazy. Over 90% of Americans believe the government killed Kennedy. But the media pundits still make fun of the public. The mainstream media and government are so out of touch. You have Diana, for heaven's sakes, telling her butler, making a video, writing in the diary. Prince Charles says he's going to kill me in a fake auto accident. That's 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 right there. Then you have all the. Uh, she, she, yeah, no, no, she didn't say Prince Charles is going to is going to kill me in a fake auto accident. She said at one point. I'm worried that I'm going to die in an automobile accident. It's quite different. And if you look for links and connections, you'll find them. No, she you know, said he told me he's going to kill me. There have, there have been inquests into Diana. There are many things. Okay, Dr. David I Kelly have, said they're going to they're going to kill me and put me in the woods. And I've been on BBC radio and they make fun of me for that. When it's on record, he sent emails out saying, if I don't shut up, I'll be found dead in the woods. He it, undissolved pills, no blood at the scene, and all these doctors have come out and said he was clearly murdered and, and, and dumped there. And you got, and, and mainstream media, let me guess, you think Dr. David Kelly committed suicide? What do you, I actually, actually, I don't feel like I have enough evidence to make a decision because what I don't do is just decide that I understand the world perfectly and know every single fact. The witnesses everything. saw men in black uniforms run so, away from the body. So, so, I mean, but this is the difference. I don't see every single world event and decide before I know the evidence whether it was a conspiracy or not. With something like David Kelly, I don't know enough of the facts. I'm not completely Okay, did sure. the government lie so, about WMDs? Is, did, did the British uh, yes. and U.S. government lie? Yes, I believe they did. Well, they admit they lied premeditatedly. I believe they did, yeah. But this is the point. You don't, you, this, is the, this is the issue I have with the way that my organization is presented sometimes in the alternative information media, which is that we're some kind of spokespeople for government. It's ridiculous. I'm critical of government all the time. I've got a report coming out next week, which is slamming the Home Secretary for not allowing these right-wing uh, protesters, the English Defence League, to protest enough. They're trying to stop them from protesting, and I'm saying it's completely wrong. Why in the world people think that we as an organisation are some kind of a government front is ridiculous, because we criticise them all the time. And that's my whole point. You know, the world is not black and white, and it's not made up. Oh, I understand that. Bad. What about common purpose? Do you guys get any funding from the government or common purpose? Absolutely nothing from common purpose. I've got no idea where this ridiculous story has come from. Do you have any evidence for this? Do, does anyone have any evidence for the link between Demos and common purpose? Paul Joseph Watson's making it as part, uh, quite a central part of his story. 
because Julian Middleton, who founded Common Purpose, was one of 20 people who founded Demos. It was a large group of people that came up with the idea of setting up a think tank. We've never had anyone... Well, listen, here's an example. I'm attacked. This is really important to get this straight. Um, we've never done any joint events with Common Purpose. He said that, 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 that Julian Middleton is, sits on our advisory board, and she does not. This is just completely inaccurate. Okay, let me ask you a question. Do you get any government funding? We get some government funding, yeah. And you know what? All of our accounts are publicly available. You can go in there and check them for yourself. No, I know, but I mean, you're a group saying we should trust the government more. And you're funded by the government. <laughs> uh, well, a very small amount of our money comes from government. And actually, I don't think that I've said anywhere in the report we should trust the government more. I don't know where... It, have, you, have you read the report? Have you read the report? Uh, I've scanned over it. Jamie, let me just stop you right there for just a second. Let me just bring something up. Have you seen the video clip uh, of the head of Visor Consultancy, Peter Powers, saying, it's incredible why we had the exact same trains and exact same bus being attacked at the exact same time and exact same place. It's incredible. It's incredible. I mean, all of this, th that happened on 9-11. They run drills so that it confuses the rest of the government and the echelon NSA systems. We see this over and over again. Uh, we have... We have the official story from pillar to post completely impossible. I went over there days after it happened. I investigated it. I've witnessed it for myself. I've interviewed the police officers. That, that I've interviewed the people that witnessed the government planting the bombs at Oklahoma City. I mean, I'm aware of this. I'm aware of Operation Gladio. I've interviewed, but I've also had family who was in the CIA okay, who would not deal drugs for the U.S. government and murder people. So I happen to know about this stuff, okay? I'm not naive. So I understand that it's come out in federal court that our own government ships guns into Mexico and cocaine back in to destabilize our country. Did you know that's come out? I've not heard that, no. But, you know, just for example, to take this... Um... This, this drill story from Visor Consultancy, you know as well as I do, that's completely ridiculous. He's come out numerous times, which is ignored by the alternative information scene, saying this was a desk-based exercise. We ran hundreds of different models. There was 20 or so people there, all of whom were police officers. What, he said that it's got nothing to do with what happened on 7-7. And if it did, it's a pretty rubbish way of doing it, getting... 15 or 20 no, minutes. No, no. Well, we've said it was a tabletop. PowerPoint, desktop presentation. No, it turns out there and, were and, drills and so, physically. And, and so why is it that that story is repeated over and over, even though the man himself has come out repeatedly to say that he has no, been misrepresented? No, he's come out repeatedly to try to spin no. it. No, 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 no. I'm afraid I don't think so. Um, he's, you know, it's absolutely obvious that what happens here... What is branch of the British government funds you? Uh, we've had nothing from intelligence agencies, if that's what you're thinking, or security agencies. Most of the money that we've ever had from the government, and I think it makes up about 5% of the money we get, maybe even less than and, that. And, and the rest tax-free foundations? It's, 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 what are some of the loving it's, foundations it's, that fund you? It's usually just to run events, and, and our events are public, and they're open for anyone to come to. And you know what else? And I would like to say this. I am more than happy for Paul Joseph Watson or any of your UK listeners to come into our office, and I'll give them a tour. They can follow me around for a week. They can see what I do. It's really not that sinister. Everything we do is... Will you show them the alien spacecraft in your basement? <laughs> no, that's off limits, I'm afraid. That's only for me. Look, look, you're, you're a nice, amiable person. I, I don't think you individually are a bad guy. So I'm not here... Thank in, you very much. I, well, I'm not here indicting you. I mean, I, I, and, I, and I hope you think I'm a friendly person. I, I loved your stuff. I loved the John Robinson um, story with you. I actually thought it was extremely courageous what you did there. And a very, very mysterious and strange set of events it was, too. Well, I mean, it is true that mainline Christian conservatives mainly go to Bohemian Grove and have gay sex together. And I'm not bashing people for their sexual persuasions. It's the fact that things aren't what they seem a lot of times is what I've found and what I've experienced. And I wish 7-7 was an intelligence operation or a group they set up and let do this. 
I wish that 9-11 wasn't an inside job, but Larry Silverstein says, pull the building, gave the order, watch it come down. I don't just yeah, have... But, but, you know, but you also know that Larry Silverstein has said over and over again, that means evacuate the building. Why yeah, twice yeah, it was already evacuated it? five Why hours before. Whole, no, but what, see, I knew where you were. Hold on. He, no, I knew no, you were going there. The fire brigade. He was talking about the New York Fire Department leaving. He wasn't talking yeah, about that. But I knew you'd say that. Me. I knew you'd say that. Let me finish. This is important because I've done countless reports on this. We have the police say, get back. They're going to bring down the building. I've talked to the cops and say there was a 10 second countdown. I've got the newscast where they said they were going to blow it up. I have the BBC saying it had fallen 25 minutes before it did, and I brought that up knowing you'd respond with Silverstein's cover story of what pull it meant. But I'm saying it doesn't just end there. I know that you can fit a lot of anomalies together and find any relationship you want, just like Paul Joseph Watson's tried to do with Demos and Common Purpose. It's entirely fatuous. But answer me this, and I've always, I've always wanted to ask you this question, uh, and it, it is an important one. Why do you think that the... American government would have felt the need to to enact a, a controlled demolition on the two towers to actually bring them down. Would it not have been more rational to just allow two planes to fly into the buildings? That surely is enough of a cause for war if that's what they were planning. Why multiply the chances that you're going to get caught exponentially by actually bringing them down in a controlled demolition in front of the entire world that was watching. I don't understand. Well, let me give you Why the answer. Do you, do you really want the answer? It's a complex. I want, I want to know what you think, yeah. Uh, no guts, no gl glory. Uh, fortune goes to the bold. Uh, bottom line, yeah. well, well, let me finish. <clears throat> bottom line, those buildings already had asbestos and structural problems. Psychologically, you do it on a weekday morning to control the week's news cycle coming up. You, you have the first plane hit to get all news cameras aiming. It's a perfect psych warfare job. And I've had top former State Department psychological warfare experts on, like Dr. Steve Pachinik and others, to say, yes, it's a perfect psyop. Then the second plane hits. Everybody now knows it's a terror attack. Then you have the controlled demolitions so the insurance money can be paid and the rest of it. Building 7 that's running the attack with the CIA, FBI, and others way down the street from it, 47 stories, it's got the explosives in it. I interviewed Peter Jennings, who said that, yeah, there were bombs going off and dead bodies. Of course, he died right after we interviewed him. Uh, are, you, are, are you suggesting that the two planes flying in on their own would not have dominated the news cycle for weeks to come? That no, no, no. We, people had to see that giant image, plus they oh, had to get rid of God. the crime scene. Okay, let me ask you this, because there's thousands of points. Do you believe not one, not one, but two magical uh, passports went out of their coats, out of their jackets, fireballs, through the building, out of the wreckage, down to the street, four or five feet of dust, and were found by the FBI uh, later that day. Do, do you believe that? I'm really not qualified to answer questions like that. In the, sa in the same way that uh, I'm not, and, and, that, and you're not qualified to answer questions about structural uh, demolition. Who is it? Who is qualified are demolition experts and structural engineers, and you know what the overwhelming majority of them say. Oh, oh the global warming's man-made and real? <laughs> architects for 9-11 truth, a rabble of a few, you know, a handful of architects who actually don't know much about structural engineering at all. Hold on, that's it. Hold on, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. Architects and engineers for 9 -11. Hold on a minute. And you know it well that the uh, outrageous. Outrageous. I got I to gotta counter that. Oh, well, but the overwhelming <laughs> scientific consensus from both demolition experts and structural engineers is that the buildings fell pretty much as one might have expected. And there was no <coughs> way to control demolition. All right. I want to counter that. We're not here talking about... I knew that it would turn into a discussion about 9-11. I'm going to phase like, you down for a minute. Stop. I got I to gotta make a point. I'm going to give you one minute to make your statement. And then you've already been talking <laughs> for a minute. And then I'm going to get two minutes to counter it. But I wanted to finish... The, sure, the, sure. The, the, the earlier point, but, but now, now you've really, really discredited yourself. So you've got a few people that don't really know much about structural engineering. There's 1,600 architects and engineers. Many of them now, hundreds of them, uh, have actually been involved building giant buildings. A whole bunch of them have built 30, 40, 50 story, and they've got very famous architects and engineers uh, coming out now. NIST has had to change their story six times on how Building 7 fell and now admits free fall and has had to make up this thermal expansion uh, uh, garbage. 
all of this is going on, and for you to say they've just got a few people in architects and engineers, who do you have? Control Demolition Incorporated that gets the contracts to blow up these buildings, uh, the wreckage, uh, Oklahoma City and 9-11? I mean, you're talking about those guys? Now, now you've got the floor. Go ahead. Uh, well, to respond to that or to speak generally? No, no, no. You just said that the overwhelming, just like yeah, Al Gore kept saying all the when, scientists when know global warming's man-made. When 9-11 when, when uh, architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth submit a well-thought-out, uh, peer, properly peer-reviewed, and not by one of the Truth of Journals, articles about this, where they not pick holes in the official account, but actually present an alternative account that can be properly scrutinized, by a peer, an anonymous peers of theirs, then I'll start listening. And when that happens, because that's how we arrive at knowledge, then I'm open, I'm all open to, to be convinced. Because for me, you know, this is the difference. I'm not wedded to the idea that 9-11 wasn't an inside job, because if it was, I'd really want to know. I have no vested interest in trying to cover up um, you know, if the government's murdering its own civilians, I've got no interest in covering Do that. Do governments right. ever stage terror? Uh, historically, I think they have, yeah. I mean, the whole, the whole origin of the word terror is from the French Revolution by the French government. So, yeah, the state-led state, state -led terror absolutely is possible when it happens. Okay, then let me, let me ask you this question. No, no, I want you to... Re listen, I watched Al Gore, this big, fat con artist, who's an oil company baron... Uh, involved in unbelievable corruption, giant houses everywhere, carbon footprint, you know, the size of 50 families or whatever. Uh, you've got this guy, jet setting all over the world, invested in gore and blood carbon trading in London, uh, all these huge Rothschild Rockefeller investments in it, carbon trading, all this money, tens of billions invested in selling this, saying ice caps are getting smaller, polar bear numbers are down, polar bears can't swim, all of this patent crap that I can disprove. I mean, the polar bear population's up five times what it was 60 years ago. You know, uh, the ice caps always shrink in the summer, expand in the winter. But, but, but he, he kept saying peer-reviewed, peer-reviewed, peer-reviewed. Now it's come out all these emails where they try to block peer-reviewed publications, where they had an inner coterie of government-funded scientists hiding the decline. And, and, and now the whole hoax is falling in on itself. They, 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 they weren't government funded, but yeah, you're talking about the University of East... Uh, Anglia. South, East Anglia, that's it, with, uh, with the, the, they were trying no, to... No, it had ICCUN funding, what are you talking about? Wait, 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 it wasn't the British government trying to fund them. I mean, you know, everything ultimately, or a lot of stuff ultimately comes from government funding because a lot of taxpayer money goes into government. They said funding. hide the decline, it's a load of crap. How, well, does, moving, how does moving your coal yeah, plants um, to China... Listen. Listen, I was disgusted. I was absolutely disgusted with that. And you talk about uh, global warming. It's another subject w in which I feel completely unqualified to pass judgment on. And I won't pass judgment on subjects which I feel wholly unqualified. And I haven't looked at the evidence strongly. Uh, well, I've looked at it deeply. Listen, I've had... I have tried to cover a military event in Brooksville, Florida. And I have a witness, Mike Hansen. And, and the military went all over the neighborhood. And I have a video of this in my film, The Takeover. All over yeah. a town saying, like a Twilight Zone episode, don't talk to Alex Jones, he's crazy. It was a military yeah. drill to practice taking over U.S. cities. I'd been to these all over the country. And then I'm standing there in the woods trying to videotape the public municipal airport where giant aircraft are landing uh, and to practice inserting troops in a U.S. city. And an and a undercover military guy jumps out of the bushes and starts lighting things on fire to blame me for it. I've experienced government-sponsored terrorism. And me and Mike uh, well, had to physically stop the guy. Is that, that government-sponsored terrorism? Yeah, it turned out he was working with the army. I mean, they, yeah, I mean, I think that's government. I think you're belittling the word terrorism if you think. I mean, I've well, no, that's a provocateur like pretty, action. Pretty, pretty shoddy. The U.S. government would do that to me have, for trying to just cover something. I wouldn't want to belittle the word terrorism because terrorism is a, an extremely serious offense and an act. And so, setting fires is terror. Very badly, Arson is terror, know. buddy. Terrorism. Arson in a populated, lighting things on fire in a populated area is terrorism. Lighting things on fire in a populated it's area is terrorism. Bar, pretty low bar. Lighting things on fire in a populated area is terrorism. Absolutely. Well, the oldest thing in the book is to set fire to things to terrorize populations. What do you think our troops did to Indian villages? Burn them out. Look at Waco. They burned those people up.
I bet you think that's a conspiracy theory. Uh, no, I read, I read into Waco and I read into um, I read into Timothy McVeigh, of course. I read into, but there are equally cases. I mean, you know, take for example the Reverend Jim Jones, terrible, terrible person, killed nine hundred and I think it was nine hundred and twenty or so American citizens, or had them commit mass suicide. He was an arch conspiracy theorist too. He was absolutely schizophrenic paranoia, is what he suffered from. What do you want me to say about things like this? Well, the I heavens, I mean, the heavens gate things. people. Uh, uh, I mean, if you take the entire spectrum of alternative thought, it's going to run the gamut from reasonable yeah. and, and well researched that the system calls conspiracy theories right That's through right. to total lunacy. But, but let's go back to Jim Jones. I've actually studied him. He was working for the CIA, he was no, working for the governor so. of California. He did have think, contracts. I don't think so. Have you read the amazing biography of him called Maven? I've actually watched documentaries in the original newscast. So, so, so have I, so have I. And, 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 and by, I think by far the best and most well uh, acclaimed biography of Jim Jones is by the journalist that spent time with him right at the last minute when he murdered that um, U.S. congressman. Um, yeah, they shot up the airplane. They shot him in the airplane, exactly. Uh, he actually concluded that he was not working for the CIA at all, at all. No, he had been he had been working for them, and you could say he probably went nuts at the end and may not have been. Uh, but uh, I mean, I, you just had to admit he, that. Listen, but he, but, he, but he used the idea that the CIA had infiltrated his group to stop people from leaving. He used it to stop people connecting with their families. He would tell the families of the people that had deserted the mm -hmm. People's Temple that the CIA had it had pulled them out and had infiltrated them, and they were going to, and that they were trying to convert them into spies, and were going to try to make them contact the people. Sure, Temple sure. But what I'm telling you, this, what I'm telling you, Jamie, is, is that this is a standard deal. Uh, in fact, uh, Cass Sunstein, do you deny the White House? Uh, regulations are said infiltrate yeah, uh, con uh, uh, conspiracy yeah. groups and put out disinfo to discredit them and sow discord with them. I, I mean, the implication that people that question the system are Jim Jones and 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 cause violence and are extremism in Jim Jones uh, is literally looking into a giant field of billions of people and then picking at things. Uh, I mean, it's actually the government I see that spreads conspiracy theories about Al Qaeda hiding under tables. But I think it's uh, I think it's a caricature of my position because I've never said that the government doesn't do those things. I've just said because it sometimes does them doesn't mean it always does them. Do you think I'm an extremist as an extremist analyst that tracks tracks what, what is it? Jamie is the head of the Violence and Extremism program. His primary research interests lie in terrorism, radicalization, and extremism, conspiracy theories and integration policy. Hey, what about Tony Blair yeah. and his secret program to bring in illegal aliens? That's now been confirmed. Uh, um, what was that exactly? I think, are you talking about immigration levels in general? Well, no, secret agreements with France, the trains with the illegals coming in for years, to then turn them into a political army. I mean, that's standard big foundation operations, but it's uh, now come I, I, out. I, I, that wasn't the story that I understood. The story that I understood was that the British, the Labour Party, for a number of years, was pursuing a very open immigration policy because they thought that it would change the face of the British population, probably for electoral reasons, because the immigrants tend to be more likely to vote for the Labour Party. These are the sorts of conspiracies that I think I would like people like you, people like Paul Joseph Watson, who are often, you know, you you guys are often tenacious and very smart. You put your en channel your energies into those things because there's a lot of rubbish taking place and a lot of lies that our governments do feed us. I just like them. I just like your efforts to be directed at that. Well, all I can say is we appreciate you coming on here into the uh, arena uh, because that certainly is admirable, Jamie uh, Bartlett. I mean, I'm, let me give you the last minute or two here uh, to make any points you want. It, it, it's just for those of us that have really researched seven seven. Uh, and those of us that have you know, uh, researched 9-11, those of us that have actually experienced the government provocateurs, uh, those of us that have actually been attacked by government thugs and told to shut up, there's no going back. And I think there's a lot of denial in the establishment 
and 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 then people like you that you know work in sociology and things and 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 outreach of just how corrupt and wicked the Western ruling class uh, has gotten. But but that's my view, and that's what I've experienced in the world. I don't think you're a conscious disinformation person. I think in some respects. You are a bit naive. Now, you could say that about me as well. And, and, and this cosmology idea that I need order to the world and I like to sit up here as a grand poobah or, or a Jim Jones advising everybody. I mean, I get that whole idea. But, but again, you've got the final comments. Go ahead. Well, uh, just another enormous thanks. I really appreciate it. And I, I, I would, I, I, I extend and I. I, I keep that invitation to people who want to contact me and want to come to our office and see what we do. It's really not that sinister. I don't think you're a crazy lunatic by any means. You're obviously an extremely intelligent person. And I just want to say as well that, I, you know, what I want is for young people, for everybody to, to criticise, to critique, to be sceptical about all the information they get. Uh, and me, the same. I know that sometimes I fall into traps of believing what I want to believe and reading what I want to read. And, and I think it's something for all of us to do. But um, keep, up the, uh, keep up the good work. Always questioning. And thank you for your time. Okay, so, so I get from what you're saying is we, Paul got it wrong, I got it wrong, that you guys aren't saying just trust mainstream media. You're saying question everything uh, then. Because when you have the mayor of London coming out and saying we've got to stop these evil 9-11 conspiracy theorist. I mean, I think that really shows that establishment thought is really crumbling and realizes it's on the verge of collapse. And I do think there's a danger in that the ruling class has been so corrupt, so deceptive, and has been caught doing it so much that I do find people now don't believe anything, and, and, and it's not even question. Uh, they do buy into the wildest conspiracy theories you can imagine say about myself. But that's because... That's because even some of the most dumbed down people now know they can't trust the system, but now they're even unable to differentiate anything. Uh, but I think that's just the overall fault of a system caught lying so much. But you just, you know, to me, I, I want as much as you want, and this is why Demos was founded, to make the British state and society more democratic, more pluralistic, more open, for people to feel like they have more sense of control and more power over the things that happen in their lives. And I think that is what is at the root of all of this. And I think that's what we want to change. But just because that is the case, I wouldn't want people to just believe any crazy conspiracy because it happens to go along with their worldview. No, you have to have standards of evidence that you apply equally to whatever information you receive. And yeah, but I agree like, with you. But l l listen, well, yeah, I've you know. done deep research. I know the stuff I'm talking about. I've got so much proof I can't even articulate it all here in a discussion. I've had to make five, six films on 9-11. I'm telling you, it's an inside job. You need to look into it and, and look into I've the facts. In, I, I have looked into it. Yeah. Well, you haven't looked deep enough, Jamie. Jamie, thank you. Uh, is is uh, there a website uh, where we can visit uh, uh, Demos and, and find out more? Yeah, it's uh, www.demos.co.uk. Uh, all the information's there. You'll find all of it. All right, well, I'll tell you, we're going to dig into your organization uh, even more now, and hopefully you'll come back with us. I know I'm going to get lots of angry emails from people. Um, it can be very difficult when you get thousands of them to reply to all of them, and I'll do my best, but um, all right. I don't always have time to do that. All yeah. right. Hey, uh, say hi to, uh, to the folks over there, and I, want, I, well, I, I, I wish you well. Say hi to O'Brien for me. I will do, and, um, and next time you're over, look me up. All right. Take care, buddy. Thank you. Uh, yeah, there you go. Well, a very charming, friendly, nice fellow. Very hard to be mean to him. I almost feel guilty slapping him around. Uh, but uh, I did hear a lot of little political points and you know lawyer points where, oh, there's just a few scraggly architects. You think it's they need to put forward peer reviewed. They have. We presented it. Check it out for yourself. That's it for this edition of Infowars Nightly News. Uh, I will not be here. Monday night, uh, I will. Uh, Aaron Dykes will be sitting in. I know I've been out of town a lot. I'm going to uh, be on, uh, out in the field with the former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura to shoot a couple episodes of his program, Conspiracy Theory, which means questioning that the earth is flat. 
Uh, so I'll be out uh, in the west somewhere in the high desert with Ventura. I'll tell you more about that when I call into my own TV and radio show on Monday. Mike Adams is sitting in on Tuesday because I'll be gone all weekend. I'm going to spend Tuesday with my children, but you know I'll end up calling in on my own show. And I'll be back next Wednesday here for InfoWars Nightly News. And we are not George Soros or New World Order or Rothschild or Rockefeller funded. We are funded by you, the supporters of this transmission, PrisonPlanet.tv subscribers. And we're having our fourth annual Money Bomb. We need to raise a half million Federal Reserve notes to be able to continue at this current pace of absolutely devastating the New World Order propaganda system. So please donate today at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb. And you can also donate by becoming a PrisonPlanet.tv member or buying memberships for your friends and family. And uh, really scaring Cass Sunstein at the White House that knows that we're on to them and understands that the villagers are coming with our uh, with our truth, with our information warfare torches and pitchforks. So again, InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. I'm Alex Jones signing off. Great job of the crew. And again, we'll uh, see you back here next Monday, 7 o'clock Central.